Today we're going to skin a, about a 28 pound coon. Nice furred South Dakota coon. Techniques we're going to use today you could use on a bear. It'd be the same, same techniques. We don't know if this coon's going to be a rug, just a tan job or life size. So we're going to make the cuts that are universal for all of them. First thing is we're going to get a length measurement of this coon. We're going to lay this tape right on the tip of the nose. We're going to run it right along the spine. We're going to locate the base of the tail. We're going to run it to the base of the tail. 27 inches length in this coon. We're going to register that length. Our girth measurement. We'll take our girth measurement after we've skinned and got the fur off. But the length, the way we're going to skin this, we're not going to Cut this for a, as I said, this can either be a rug, just a tan job, whatever, when the time comes. We're not going to skin it like we would a deer and go to the center of the body back here. If this is a rug, we want this body, this hair here, to lay over on the side. So we're going to make this cut, starting right, at, right below the toes. We're going to come down the leg, but then we're going to slant to the inside. We're going to go right straight across. So that when this is skin, this fur here lays over and makes a really wide coon for us. Same with the other side, we're going to make that same cut. We'll go match right to that first cut we made. Come out the same spot. We're going to spin it around the back. We're going to go down the feet, right below the toes again, right down the center of the pad. And we're going to cut right through the anus. Repeat that process with the other leg. Now we, made, now we need to make our incision to open this up. We're going we're gonna to do a spread out. We're not going to case this mount. If you were going to case it, you wouldn't have made any of these cuts. We're going to open this completely up for tanning. I still use the belly incision. You know, I know a lot of people like to use the dorsal incision. There will be dorsal incision cuts. If you know it's going to be a life size, but as I said, we don't know what this one's going to be yet, so right now we're just making these cuts so we can do whatever we want at a later time. Now as I stayed center, I got one testicle on each side. Now it's just going to be a matter of skinning this coon. Completely out. Whether they're running low on fat already, there's some fat here, but it's not overly fat. Not on the belly area anyway, maybe we'll hit more on the back. Whoops! Good sharp knives make this job a lot easier, a lot simpler. If you want a good birthday Christmas present, just clean that up. That's be a swizzle stick for somebody. When I'm skinning coons, when I'm skinning most things, I like to keep my hands dry with borax. Don't use borax if you're skinning out fox or skunk so because it'll counteract with the tanning and it'll cause slippage, especially around the thin areas of those thinner animals. For coons, 
I've never had a problem using it, so I'll keep using it. Another step I forgot to show you a little earlier. I like to open all my mouths. Tough part. You don't want to give up. I like to cut my lips loose from the outside here so when I'm skinning down over the head it makes this final skinning easier. So I just carefully Right along the jawbone, remove the bottom and the upper lip. As I said, this, these cuts and these processes are pretty much the same for all your animals. It would work on the bear the same way. The main thing is that cut we showed you, as long as you cut towards the center, you can, you can, it can still be done as a life size or a rug, whichever you decide later. If you make the wrong cuts and you cut towards the back, towards the center of the body, then you're going to have a real skinny rug if you ever decide to do a rug or your taxidermist is going to have to do a lot of repair and then you're going to see the stitches unless the hair is really long. So main thing is just those cuts. You know, as you can see, I kept that cut forward. Now we're getting down a leg here, the first leg. I like to get the skin off the body, get the body out of the way, so I'm just going to skin down this foot a ways till I get to these toe bones. And I'll just take a side cutter. I'm going to cut these toe bones off about two to three inches long. And I'll take the toes out later. I just want to get the body out of my way so it's not hampering me when I'm working on the skin. Repeat the process on the other front foot. We got both front feet loose. We're going to move back. We're going to do the back feet. We'll use pretty much the same technique on them. We'll just skin down that pad, skin down the foot quite a ways towards the toes, opening it up.
I have to skin coon for tanning or anything, it's, it's part of the life size mount, but my tanning prices don't include skinning. I charge 25 bucks, you could even charge more. I always, when I'm, even when I'm tanning somebody's animals, I always leave the toes and the feet on. They might not leave them on themselves, they might not ever do anything with it, but quite often in my years of experience, the guy will get it back and decide, that's pretty nice looking, let's mount it. And, well, if you cut the feet off, you don't get that choice anymore. So when I skin them, I go through the extra time of leaving the feet on, even if I'm only tanning it at that point. loose. We've got skin down the belly. We're going to make this incision up the tail. Be on the under, actually the underside of the tail. I've never found a good way to pull a coon tail yet, so I cut them. They can be pulled, but I've seen too many of them ripped off over the years trying to pull them, so I cut them, skin them. So I got to do the rest of the body. Just find your tip, work all the way to the edge, all the way to the tip. And just skin it out like you would dress the animal. Now if you're a hunter doing this, doing it just for practice, or if you're doing it out in the woods, I'm going to assume it ain't going to be a raccoon. This is more for the taxidermy oriented people. But if, you, if you're using this one to learn how to skin a bear, as I said, it's the same, same concept. Bears you will skin out in the wilderness. If you ever think you're going to be bear hunting, get some coons in the fall and practice on them. They'll give you the same, same experience doing a coon that you'll need for a bear. I suggest practice on everything if you want your mounts. If you're a hunter and you want your mount to look good, you need to properly take care of it from the beginning and that doesn't mean if it's 50 degrees out that you can just leave it hang for days it needs to be prepped salted otherwise you will start to have slippage problems and then you'll wonder why your mounts not as good as it should have been and it's not generally going to be the taxidermist's fault it's what the taxidermist can only work with what he gets and if you're a taxidermist, don't let these animals come in and lay on your floor for two days before you skin them neither. Skinning should take priority if you're going to stay in business. There we got the tail loose. 
Everything's loose on the bottom side. Now we're just going to go straight down the back and over the head with this animal. Keep a little pressure on your hide at all times when you're doing it. You can see I'm leaving quite a bit of fat. We'll scrape that off. My first goal is to get it off the body. Get rid of the body and then... Now we're coming down over the shoulders, into the neck area. As you can see, I keep turning this coon around. If you had a place to hang it, you might find that you can skin easier if it's hanging. If it's bigger animals, I'd hang it. Right now, we're skinning down over the top of the head. We gotta take it easy here till we find the ear. This is where it takes practice, a lot of practice. You don't want to go deep into the ears or the eyes here. You want to do a good job. Right here is where our ear connects. You can see right where the ear cartilage is right there. We're going to cut deep right there and we're going to sever the ear away from the skull. Right there at that point we severed the ear away from the skull. Right here is the ear that we severed. We're going to repeat that process on the other side. But you got it. This is all a practice deal. There we severed that ear away. Now we're going to go down. We're going to find the eyes. If you pay attention to your animal, you'll see the eyes about two inches in front of the ear. Right here's the ear, right here's the eye point. We're going to make sure we cut deep, stay deep enough so we don't cut that eyelid. And here again, it's, I can't stress enough, if you're ever going to be doing this for a trophy, get animals to practice on and practice. This is something that can't, you can watch me do it a hundred times, you can watch any teacher do it a hundred times, you can listen to us explain it. Until you do it and keep doing it, you can't learn it. It's all practice. We got both eyes cut away right now. We got the bottom lip where we'd cut from the other side cut away. We're just going to continue coming down that face, making sure we stay deep enough so we don't cut them eyelids. We'll go right down over the nose and we're going to completely remove the skin from the body. At this point, if you got a freezer, you can freeze it before you take it to taxidermist. If you're going to freeze it before you 
scan it if you're a taxidermist. My situation, we're going to finish this. We're going to finish this whole process because we've got. We're going to send it to a commercial tannery. We already did our length once. We determined we had 27 inches right there. It's 27 inches at the base of the tail. We're going to take the girth measurement around this coon in two spots. We're going to take a chest measurement, which is right behind the legs. That's going to read about 15 and a half on this coon. Then we're going to go back and we're going to take a belly measurement. And that's going to read about 20. We're going to log those measurements in. Make sure we have them. At this point, we can discard our coon body. We're done with it. We don't need the carcass for anything. If the customer wanted the skull, you would save the skull for them. We don't need it, so we're going to discard it. Our next step is going to be to do the ears and the lips. I like to start with a new scalpel blade at this point. Keep my hands dry. I'm going to find my ear butts. And here again, it all takes practice. I'm going to slowly start working. This is the inside of the ear. This is the back side. The inside, you're going to find that corner really fast down here. Right there is my corner of my ear. My finger's inside the ear right now. Right there is my corner. So now I can move around. I can work taking the back down all the way through this process. Coons don't have very big ears. It's a relatively simple process on a coon. You can take a stick or a screwdriver or I've got a little bar made with a blunt edge on it. I'll just push down there. I'll keep that bar on my lap to put a little pressure on it. You always find skinning. If you've got a little pressure, that helps you pull as you're cutting. You can see where to cut a lot easier. And your skinning job will go a lot simpler if you can just keep some pressure. That's why you're big. Big skinning plants, they got what they call pullers in them. They'll hook the animal up and actually put pressure on with cylinders or cables. And they'll keep that skin tight and all they have to do is touch it with the knife and it'll basically a lot of time peel itself right off. Just keep working this out until you find the edges of those ears. And here again, that all takes. I can show you and show you and show you. But until you do it, you're not ever going to learn. It's going to take practice. You're going to make mistakes. You're going to le hopefully learn from those mistakes. There's one ear turned inside out. Now we'll switch over. We'll do the other ear. Repeat that process. seen this done you're gonna think man how do you turn an ear inside out well actually there's two layers there and you're just separating the two as you go inside out taking the membrane away from the cartilage leaving the cartilage attached to the inner ear at this point on coons bears we never remove the cartilage 
If we're mountain deer, elk, we remove the cartilage at a later time after it's tan. And we put ear liners in, these little ears. We just use a bonded method, which is taught in a different video. This video is more for the beginner, the, even the hunter, to learn how to do it himself. It's an important video. As far as I'm concerned, for the hunter to get the property to the tax from the right point. At this point, both ears are done. We're going to split the nose right down the center through the cartilage going to the pad and around the edges here. Open that nose up so we can get salt down in it. It's not as important on coon sized animals as it would be on a bear sized animal because they got real heavy cartilage, but at this point. I'm telling you to use a coon to practice to learn how to do it for bears. Coons are relatively cheap. If you, if you know somebody that traps, know somebody that hunts, you can probably pick a coon up for little or nothing. Most places you can drive around the road and pick them up off the road. There are the nostrils are opened up at this point. All we have left on this is on the head is to split the lips. This is just going to be like butterflying steaks. We're going to start at the back corner of the mouth where it's the thickest. And we're just going to keep rolling the inner lip out. I've always got my finger underneath it. We're going to roll right to this point on the lip, to the lip line. I know you're seeing a lot of different steps right now. Watch this video a couple times, practice it many times. Watch some more of the skinning videos. What we tell you in one, we might forget in the next. Basically all skinning, all year, all prep. It's going to be real close to the same for all animals. You got your ears, your lips, your nose, your eyes. Whether you're caping a deer, or skinning an animal, these processes are something you have to learn and you have to get, if you're going to be a taxidermist, you have to get good and speedy at. If you're just a hunter, it really doesn't matter if it takes you three or four hours to prep that bear. You went on a once in a lifetime hunt or a trophy hunt, what's three or four hours to prep your animal to get it ready to go? On the taxidermist side, if you're going to make a living, you got to get efficient at it. There we got the lips all split open. You can see how the lip line is. Now it's wide open. Now we're going to move on to removing the toe bones that we left in earlier. You got Basically 20 toes, I believe, on a coon to remove. We'll remove these first five, show you how we do it. We'll flesh the animal. I got the skin down part way. I'll open up all five toes. I'll get between them right down to where I quit skinning. Then since I'm in my shop, I got a vise, so I'm going to move it to the vise and remove the toes in the vise. This time we're going to remove the toe bones. We're going to use our shop vise to keep the toes tight. Just since it's here, we can use it. We're going to clamp the toe in that vise. We're very carefully going to remove this toe bone as far out as we can get it.
Got a little tear in that one, so we're not quite going to get it to the joint. Yeah, yeah, we are. There's the joint. Just took a little added pressure. Bears, they're a little easier. You can pull down that joint. Coons, beavers, you got to be careful so you don't pull them toes out. Because they're not as strong animal as a bear, but as long as you learn enough, you'll get right down to that joint and them toes. And you'll have a nice clean foot when this thing's mounted. And as I said, you got 20 toes removing this thing. This is all practice again. I can show you what we're doing. I can explain what we're doing. I can't make you do it. You have to learn it. I'm a firm believer. 99% of what I've learned, what I know I've learned over the years just by practice. We didn't quite get those two bones split. But everything I'm showing you has all been learned through a lot of practice and a lot of time. And if it's worth your own trophy, it's worth the practice. And if you're going to do it for a living, it's all about practice. It's all about doing it. No different than going to school for four years to learn a trade. Here you're going to learn a trade hands-on practice. You're going to watch these tapes. You're going to see how it's done. And then you're going to have to do it. Then go back and watch some more tape. And eventually you'll be able to completely skin this animal. Hour, hour and a half, it should be done for you. With the proper cuts, you can see how wide this coon is right here in the sides. That's what your coon rug would look like. If you make the improper cuts, all this height, I've seen people cut this out right like this and put all of it up here. It does no good up around the head. So by making the proper cut that we showed you, you get a nice full rug when you make a rug out of this or a bear. The only reason I'm doing this coon for a training video is hunters, taxidermists, these are the perfect animals. They got fat on them. They're the perfect animal to practice for bears, for just about anything because they're cheap. You can see the pile of fat we've already removed from this hide. Excess fat, we tried to be careful when we skinned it to not leave too much fat on the hide, but this hide's ready for salting. At this time, we're gonna, we'll discard our fat. We'll salt this hide. Got to make sure the head's turned inside out so you can get at the flesh side of it. Since I'm in my shop, I wanted to use liberal salt. If you're out in the wild, you're probably not going to take as much salt on a bear hunt as I'm going to have in my shop. So you're going to have to rub it in better. Go with a non-iodized fine mixing salt. Take it along for bears, I would suggest, oh, 20, 25 pounds, depending on the size of your bear. And then lay, this, lay that bear on a little bit of a slope with the head uphill so all the moisture runs off that bear as it's curing. Because it'll start, this salt will start to take moisture out shortly after it's put on. And if you mess with it a lot, you'll know what I'm talking about because it'll take the same moisture out of your hand. Just make sure you got it rolled to all the edges good. Make sure you got both sides of the head. I always like to put a little bit inside. If I'm doing bears, I'll actually get it and poke it inside the ears a little so it cures them out good. I don't nothing worse than a bald ear on a bear. Make sure the lip line, make sure every bit of that height is salted and got salt on it. Lay it aside, let it set and cure for a day and then come back and rub the salt in. Make sure it got all spots. As you can see, we've covered that height good in salt. We probably, I probably used 
10 or 12 pounds of salt just on a raccoon and if you're out in the wild you can probably get by with 15 to 20 on a bear but I my belief is you can never have too much salt too little do damage before too much well that's the end of it that hide from here will go to my tannery if you're the hunter you'd pack that hide out in a few days when you came out of the brush um, if you're a hunter and you can get it skinned off like that and get it to a freezer Roll, it, roll the hide up before you salt it. Don't salt it and freeze it. You wouldn't even have to remove the toe bones or the skull. You could leave the skull in it, roll it up. Leave the head out, leave the paws out because they're the longest thing to thaw out so they can start thawing right away. The hide can be unrolled and thawed out faster. And freeze that bare solid and get it to your taxidermist as soon as possible. That's, that's the main thing, hunters, is if you want a good quality mount, Get it to your taxidermist as soon as possible. That concludes this video.